Hello, my friends of the Psychedelic Renaissance. It's Tom Hatzis, your psychedelic historian, and this is Mushrooms and Rewilding the Heart. While the conversations regarding psychedelics these days tend to orbit the medical model and therapeutic aspects, I believe there is another side to these plant and fungal medicines that is getting completely overlooked. Now, to be clear from the outset, when talking about deep traumas that deal with things like childhood neglect, or sexual assault, or any other kind of harrowing experience, I am in full support of the medical model, and I wish anyone who has ever dealt with such awful experiences healing, happiness, and to thrive in this life. In this video, I'd like to address another aspect of mental health, a side that doesn't so much deal with the deep traumas like the kinds I just mentioned, but rather with the daily anxieties and depressions that so many of us feel simply by virtue of the fact that we live in the modern world. As Edward O. Wilson once stated, quote, the real problem of humanity is the following. We have Paleolithic emotions, medieval institutions, and godlike technology. And it is terrifically dangerous, and it is now approaching a point of crisis overall." Close quote. Wilson was a myrmecologist. Now, before you get excited, a myrmecologist does not study mermaids, they study ants. Nonetheless, I believe he makes an excellent point. We simply are not living in the kind of environment that we evolved to live in. I recently saw this cartoon and feel like it really drove the point home. Like, is this koala really prone to anxiety or other mental health distresses? Or has deforestation caused her to have a nervous breakdown? As our technology, social media, and egotistical desire to just be experts and know-it-alls about every topic under the sun slowly drives us mad, perhaps sitting on a couch in a therapist's office, while indispensable in some cases, is not always the medicine we need. Perhaps we need to dig deeper and find the root of the problem. Maybe before seeking a cure, we try prevention first. Might this prevention include a different way to approach psychedelics outside a clinical setting? In a forest somewhere, rewilding our hearts? Perhaps the prescription we need is just to get weird with it. This beautiful connection, this thing that ties all of humanity together, our wild side, that part of us that is still primitive as fuck. Maybe we need to get in touch with that. I mean, holy shit. What I love about psychedelics, especially mushrooms, is the way they allow us to get weird, allow us to let our freak flag fly. And I think maybe, just maybe, this could be the kind of preventive medicine we need. At least for me, it's been the best medicine for the daily anxieties and depressions that we all face. And that's why I recommend it to you. Maybe we need to forget the godlike technology, forget the medieval institutions, and reconnect with that part of our brain that is still primitive that part of our brain that contemplated immaterial realities and sought transcendence in spiritual realms. Because the truth is, whether you believe in immaterial realities or spiritual realms or other dimensions or anything like that, you do come from a species that does. And I believe it might be mentally healthy to just get weird with that. I could not possibly tell you if my beliefs are true. My worship of Gaia Hecate and Kirki, the energies of my personal pantheon, if you will, might be complete delusional horseshit. But I don't care, because it serves me well. It allows me to get in touch with my primitive brain, that part of us that existed before our godlike technologies started turning us all into self-centered, insufferable assholes. My spiritual beliefs, especially combined with mushrooms, serve me. Whether or not they are true, or true for me, or true for you, or true for anyone else. They serve me because I get to get weird with them. I get to touch that ancestral heartbeat and carry on traditions from a frightened species, us, <laughs> whose brains were both too big and too small. Big enough to understand mathematics and literature, 
but too small to really know if there's anything going on behind the veil. Anything going on behind material reality. So get fucking weird with it, because we don't actually know. And if anything has been truly therapeutic in my life, it's been eating mushrooms, getting out of my comfort zone, rolling around in the dirt, and just getting fucking weird. To be clear, I'm not saying that getting wild and weird is going to address all of your problems or help you cope with any of your traumas. And I'm certainly not saying to just throw away any medication you might be on and totally ignore the advice of your doctor. What I am saying is that you can create a space where you are allowed to experiment freely. Get naked, sing, dance, howl at the moon. Do something with mushrooms or any other psychedelic that takes you out of your comfort zone. Get wild and weird, motherfucker. Look at you, you grand bipedal thinking ape that can contemplate the mysteries of the cosmos. Do something with that. We've so disconnected ourselves from the creative spirit of these plants and fungi and so overly focused on the therapeutic model that we've overlooked that primordial fact, that primeval truth, that something out there in the universe is speaking to us through these medicines. I don't care if you're an atheist. Eat mushrooms and call out to the gods in perfect love and perfect trust. Ask for their blessings. Ask for their guidance and wisdom and truth. Put your ego aside for a moment. Just do it and see how you feel about it. And I'm not saying you have to believe any of it. What I am saying is try embracing this part of your humanity and start rewilding your heart. You come from a species that evolved to have these kinds of experiences. Why not see what all the clamor's about? I mean, personally, I think there's something more to these medicines. I think they're connecting us to greater intelligences and energies in the universe. But I'm just some crazy asshole that eats mushrooms and talks to trees. So, you know, what does it matter what I think, right? But I'm also well-adjusted and happy because I embrace this spiritual part of my humanity. I allow these medicines to keep my heart wild. You have a mammalian brain that has sought spiritual transcendence for, what, I don't know, like tens of thousands of years? Tap into that. Touch that. Massage that. Make love to that. I think people might need to reestablish a connection with that and accept the fact that the medical model, while certainly useful, is not the only avenue for healing with psychedelics. To be sure, the medical model is necessary, but I think it's also necessary to recognize that spiritual transcendence, connecting to the earth, and rewilding your heart are just as important to the healing process. And holy shit do we need it! And it's so much fun! and liberating, and who knows? Do it often enough, and maybe you don't need to spend an hour on a therapist's couch talking about the daily anxieties and depressions of living in the modern world. In my opinion, one of the issues with so many of us is that we're so scared and detached from our wild and weird nature. That part of us that yearns for the transcendent and holding conversations with fairies and aliens and whatever other entities you might meet beyond the veil. We need to stop being scared of this and embrace it and use these medicines to reclaim it. So eat mushrooms, smoke cannabis, drink ayahuasca, definitely drink ayahuasca, and reclaim your wild heart. Light a bonfire, call out to the gods, and pray for magic to storm upon you. Release this suppressed humanity found deep in your soul stop rejecting that part of psychedelics that clearly points towards spiritual realities. Why are you still even listening to me? Go eat some mushrooms, get naked, run in the forest, and play in the dirt. I'll see you there. Well, my friends, that's all I have for you this time, and like always, I'd love to thank you for stopping by. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a share, and don't forget to subscribe to the Psychedelic Historian YouTube channel, of course, if it all be your will. And until we meet again, I'm Tom Hatzis, 
your psychedelic historian, reminding you that you free your mind by rewilding your heart. Peace.